just to give you a little bit of description of Mr. Reza today, uh, Mr. Reza Sayan was appointed the company CEO uh, in October 2017. Uh, he was instrumental in setting up My Creative in 2012, uh, being its first chief financial officer. Uh, Reza is a chartered accountant uh, with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, previously, he was the finance general manager of Media Prima Berhad, in charge of its group treasury and financial operation, and also the chief financial officer of TV Network. Trained with the big four accounting firms with more than 10 years experience, uh, Mr. Reza has developed a unique perspective in accounting, finance, and treasury with concentration on assurance services, mergers and acquisition, due diligence, and valuation with clientele spinning within Europe, Middle East, and North America, and Southeast Asian countries. Following its humble beginning in My Creative now has four business divisions, uh, namely Private Debt, Private Equity, Rio, and Chindana. So today, I would like to introduce to everyone Mr. Riza Sayan of My Creative Ventures. Thank you, Alia. Yes, a very uh, glamorous and generous introduction. Hello, hey, guys. Good morning. morning. How are we doing? Good. How are the Friday vibes? Looking uh, forward for your weekend? Yeah. Thank you very much uh, uh, for, for coming uh, here today. And uh, thank you very much for supporting this event and supporting Common Ground. Yeah. Um, well, um, this is the second talk that I am actually uh, uh, giving a common ground for the CEO uh, uh, talk, yeah. So um, hands up, actually, who knows uh, who has heard about my creative or who has not heard about my creative? Who has not heard about my creative? So you guys know what you guys, okay? Uh, what comes into your mind when people say my creative? <coughs> Anything? Creative stuff. Creative stuff. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> It's, it's, it's basically, you, you're basically right, because uh, a lot of the time, we uh, 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 ask uh, by email, via phone, uh, and uh, people ask actually verbally, hey, um, can I actually join you guys? Uh, can I actually uh, be part of your uh, production house, be part of your publication house, be part of your ground event? So, so yeah, uh, my creative are uh, not all of them. <laughs> so my, my creative actually uh, to start with, uh, we are predominantly uh, an investment house. We uh, provide uh, financing. We provide uh, equity injection. Uh, increasingly, um, one of our subsidiary uh, basically uh, look at event, uh, ground event, uh, Rio. And we also actually look at the, the blueprint of uh, the creative industry. So uh, with that, I think uh, I just uh, go Because uh, I want to actually uh, 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 explain uh, what my creative role in the creative industry, and after that, uh, maybe actually we actually go through a Q and A on 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 what uh, my creative is all about and how. Hey, John, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and how uh, there's my friend John here uh, back there, and how uh, basically we can uh, contribute to the whole ecosystem. Because uh, last time. When my creative was created uh, six years ago, we actually look uh, only from the financing aspect. Okay, uh, how many of you guys, uh, shows of hand, uh, involved in creative stuff? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, can I know, Chisa? Uh, what are you involved in? Right now, I'm involved in uh, partner as a, a senior assistant. Uh, I'm not just gonna say VC. All right, VC. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, your VC, your investment machine. <laughs> your picking investment as well, like, like us. Not that much, it's actually, I've been recently incorporating the just uh, ah, okay, okay. Just right, right. Like okay. I, I saw some uh, fashion designer here. Uh, you guys, uh, music industry, yeah, some music industry as well. Anybody from publishing industry? Anybody, yeah, you guys, publishing? No? 
Anybody from uh, production house uh, doing film, dramas? Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, right. Just a background, which I think you can look at the uh, graph there. Uh, sorry guys, for the creative people, uh, it's basically numbers. I'm actually an accountant, a boring accountant. I came from a, a, a big four uh, accounting firm, so uh, boring tech now. So you can actually look from here uh, until 2014, the data that we gather from MDEP, from Finas, from BNC. Uh, the part of the creative pie from our overall GDP, Malaysian GDP is less than 2%. Yeah. Okay, you guys know that actually Malaysia GDP actually grow at five, around 5% 5 per annum, right? Uh, our creative industry also grows, but at the current rate that we are growing, we always doesn't, we always do not surpass 2% from part of the GDP. That's actually a very, very low statistic. If we compare uh, on our uh, neighborhood, uh, countries like uh, Indonesia, Thailand, even Philippines, they already up to double digit growth and part of their uh, GDP around uh, more than 10% of, of GDP. So this, what we have here in Malaysia is actually very, very low. But of course, uh, the, the, the data that we have is basically from uh, source, which is actually uh, looking at animation, and, and filler, and they don't actually cover other than uh, those filler and animation. So, so maybe this quarter, but still, it is actually showing low figure. Why actually I show this? That's actually why marketing is basically come into picture. Right, uh, what marketing is? Alright, it's actually, uh, like I said just now, it's investment out of the government. Predominantly, we do investment in terms of equity, in terms of uh, giving loans to, to creative companies was actually started in 2012 uh, with a uh, starting fund of 200 million ringgit. And uh, we can actually see that uh, basically we uh, strive to uh, help the Malaysian uh, creative industry companies to elevate the creative industry. All right? These are the sub-industry that actually we are looking at. They are actually all 10 of them. You can actually see if let's say you are from creative industry, you can see that you are inside here. If let's say those who are in creative businesses, if let's say you guys are not inside here, please let me know after this. Then we can actually put it here. All right? Uh, any anybody not not in here? No? Okay. Okay. Right. Predominantly, we are actually looking at this. Uh, so uh, in fact, uh, if let's say I can uh, go through one by one. Content creation is basically straightforward. Whatever that uh, production houses that are doing uh, film, drama, animation, those are actually uh, inside this category. Performing arts. Performing arts uh, basically looking at uh, theater, looking at a musical, uh, visual arts, we are looking at public, uh, sorry, art gallery. Okay? So uh, let me actually just tell you why we don't look at uh, artists per se, we don't actually really not support artists, but we support the company that can give business to artists. You just imagine an artist that actually doing sculpture, doing uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 not drawing actually painting, all that. They will actually have to concentrate on their creative side, which is doing sculpture and painting, but. Will they be? Will they be able to do business? I don't actually uh, really want to actually look down on this, but uh, the business side of it is basically on your left brain. So the right brain, the artists at least do uh, creative stuff. So usually they will pair with those who actually have the left brain, which is their business-minded people. So they create a gallery. So the gallery will have. The job for the artist, the gallery will actually curate for the artist, the gallery will uh, have the show for the artist, the gallery will buy uh, the, the, the artwork from the artist and the gallery will sell on behalf of the artist. So that's actually where we are looking at. We look at those people which can give business.
to the creative industry. Okay? Likewise, uh, if you look at literature, literature, the manuscript writers, they are the creative people, right? So, but we don't actually fund the manuscript writers because the manuscript writers will want to do the books, okay? They, 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 they write, they write and write. So, the one that actually gives business to them is basically the publication house. The publication house will basically get their manuscript, publish it, print it, and then give to the distributor to distribute and then go to the book uh, sellers. Uh, one tricky bit is actually on fashion. Fashion is actually quite unique because fashion is related to retail. So if you look at fashion, fashion designer, uh, sorry, I didn't get your name, you are Nana. Lana, okay, we have a fashion designer here, Lana. So, Lana, you design yourself, right? Yeah, designer all that. So, so basically, a fashion designer, fashion, uh, what you call it, uh, people, they can do their own business. So usually uh, you actually have your designer, you will actually have your seamstress, you have actually uh, people that actually uh, proc you procure for, for, for the material to be, to be done. Actually. So, so, so fashion is actually uh, uh, is unique in this, in this matter, but the others we need to actually step up ahead. Uh, publication house for manuscript writers, uh, what you call it, uh, galleries for, for those uh, uh, artists. All right. Next one. Zamtoy actually used to have a talk with us. What he said is basically this for one. He's actually a fashion designer. Who doesn't know is Zamtoy? You guys know Zamtoy, right? He's actually a Malaysian, raised uh, from Kelantan, and now he's actually famous in New York. So uh, what he said is actually in my business, creativity only accounts for ten percent of it. The other ninety percent is business acumen. So that's actually what some boys say. And it's actually very, very true. All right, just to put in perspective where my creative is right now. You guys actually know about a lot of these uh, government agencies which involve in all of the investment work, this and that. They have different mandate. So you guys know actually that marketing is actually mandated to look into the creative industry. You just made it. Uh, any of you guys uh, have gone to the bank to actually ask for business loan, sorry, to ask for car loan, to ask for house loan and whatnot, not right? So this uh, car loan, you go there, you sign the loan agreement, you get a car. This uh, house loan, you go to the bank, you sign the agreement, you got your house. Of course, actually, they have to do some due diligence and tax finding and that. But business loan, have you guys tried to actually go to the bank and ask for loan, like uh, for example, uh, say, hey, Mr. Bank, uh, banker, I want to actually do a art gallery. Can you give me one million? What do you guys think actually the banker will, will say to you? Uh, no problem, sir. Uh, uh, I'm a banker. You want to do art gallery? Yes, uh, you can you follow actually the uh, keluar sign like that actually, and then you go out. They will say that. Actually, you, <laughs> I mean, uh, joke aside, uh, I am not kidding you. They will actually uh, not entertain at all on any of the 10 creative pillars that actually you want if you want to actually uh, ask for business loan. So hence why my creative is basically created. So if you can look at the chart, sorry, I just uh, uh, want to explain to you, okay. This uh, line actually represents uh, those uh, startup, early startup. So we have uh, agencies like Cradle, MDEC, Finas, and MCFC, which in Malay is KKMM lah. So they are in the ground, okay? When you go up the ladder, MTDC, TUNB, MathCap, MDV, KMB is actually a Kupulan Muda Perdana, growing and maturing. You have actually Equinas, Kalana, PMB up there. So basically, these are actually all the government agency with different mandate that are actually giving out funding and also equity protection, okay? Whatever that actually goes up there, no grant available, just investment in terms of debt or equity protection. So they have different mandates. So my creative uh, operate in the realm of between startup and growing. So basically, uh, when we actually provide debt, when we provide equity injection, we will actually look at your business uh, track record. All right? Can I see it? Yeah. Thank you. It's better. All right. So uh, where do you go from here? So uh, how to fund your business? 
basically um, we are looking at uh, providing loans and equity. Why I actually put this kind of graph is basically to uh, elaborate that usually people will actually look for grant for creative business lah, yeah? and also they use actually their savings. You look at David Yu, you look at Yusuf Aslam, they use their own savings. Okay, they, they, they got some grants, yes, but uh, predominantly they use their savings. But now uh, the government actually wants us to basically uh, be accountable and uh, we want to actually promote people to be entrepreneur. So hence why we actually have loans and equity injection. That's why actually uh, we, we want to do. <coughs> and uh, what are the uh, products that we have? We have uh, revolving credit. Uh, what revolving credit is for those who are uninitiated, it is like a credit card. You know, you have a facility amount, a ceiling. Let's say we give you a tenure, uh, facility of one million. So you can actually uh, use that one million for the five years. As long as you don't actually exceed, you pay. Uh, you, you use, you pay. And use, you pay. Okay? Uh, term loan is actually direct. Uh, uh, if you think you can actually have a uh, house loan or car loan, as you said, just like that. And uh, ordinary shares is just shares. RCPS is shares, but it's preferred shares. Okay? Alright. Uh, this is not rocket science. Just a graph that I actually want to explain to you how it works. Uh, this is actually revolving credit. Uh, how it works is actually if let's say you look at number one, positive and negative, you will actually uh, have a negative uh, moment whereby uh, you need actually uh, uh, funding. That's where actually you ask for funding. So when you guys actually uh, have a negative moment in your uh, business cycle, you will actually get uh, come to us. Ask for uh, revolving credit line. Right? We will give to you, and then after that, uh, number two is basically when you guys actually uh, receive the payment. Let's say from uh, the 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 what you call it the uh, TV3, the line of TV3, TV1 or Astro, then you actually pay us, and the cycle will actually go in there. So that's why actually it's a revolving credit. It's a cycle. So you get from us funding. You do uh, your production, and then after that, it's actually DX, it's transmitted, then the uh, broadcaster will pay you, and then you repeat the cycle. Alright? This is actually how we fund uh, predominantly our creative content uh, people as the production houses. Okay, term loan. Term loan is basically, uh, number one, is basically when you guys actually have the drawdown. Usually, term loan, you use it actually for uh, KTEX. Uh, Capital expenditure uh, based uh, business actually. When you have uh, what you call it, the fashion uh, line, you have you want to actually buy some machines on that, you use a term loan. You can actually use a combination of term loan and also uh, revolving credit. So, term loan basically uh, we will uh, give you say a five years tenure and then uh, looking at your business plan and cash flow, then we look at uh, how long uh, it will actually churn out money. Then we, we may actually give you. Uh, uh, number two, actually, gestation period of uh, say one year, one and a half year, depending on the case by case basis. And then after that, once the project basically make money, then you can actually uh, pay us back. So it's actually flexible. Yeah? You guys okay? Eh? It's not rocket science. It's eh? forward. <laughs> Alright. Uh, our funding criteria. Okay, since we are actually from the banking and also accounting sector, so we use also the funding criteria from the banking sector, but of course we do it to the creative industry. Lah. We call it 5C. Uh, always, if you say you are uh, an investment banker or you are from the uh, 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 corporate bank, this is actually what you use uh, for criteria that uh, you actually assess it. Okay? First, actually, we look at credit history. We look at the directors, we look at the shareholders, whether they are actually having uh, any outstanding long outstanding debt from other financial institutions, if yes, then we will actually shy away. If not, then we will actually go proceed ahead. Collateral, we look at uh, what they can give us as collateral. Okay? Uh, but in this case, you guys are in creative industry. So the collateral that we are looking at is IP, intellectual property. Okay? Your brand, your, your uh, what do you call it, your, the, the title of your uh, manuscripts, and so on. Conditions. The current affairs of your business and industry. So, I said just now, startup, right? 
and I said also uh, we look at your uh, track record. So we look at track record of at least one year for private debt, and for private equity we look at the profit track record of at least three years. All right. So the idea is the idea is actually uh, for uh, for for uh, for private debt actually we look at uh, those who actually have an established brand and we actually fly. And the private equity, of course, we are looking at profit so that you can actually expand the business. Okay? Um, we have a cash flow. Of course, uh, you guys actually have to provide the business plan and, of course, the cash flow as well. And the last but not least is capital. Your skin in the game. So we look at uh, how much actually you can actually put in. That's why actually it will, all this will determine how much that we are going to charge you. So that's the most important thing. Like I think the rate is between 6 and 8% for private debt. Yeah? Okay, yeah? So far so good? Not too technical, not too boring actually. If anything, actually, you guys actually just can stop me and then ask me anytime. Alright? Right. right. Uh, we have a pitching session when before actually we, we assess uh, the uh, uh, loan application. So for private debt, private debt, we look at so we have to be company incorporated in Malaysia. Alright. Minimum 20,000 on range shares. So if let's say as long as uh, you have 20,000, you are good. But if let's say you're asking uh, the, the financing for the loan, you're asking for uh, uh, 1 million or 2 million or 3 million, we will actually consider to increase your uh, uh, share capital. Because like I said, actually you're skin in the game. Yeah? And uh, minimum must be 51% active Malaysian shareholder. Why we say this? Because we want the entrepreneur to be Malaysian. Yes, you can actually partner with uh, those uh, from US, the American, the Hongkies, the Taiwanese, uh, whatever, Korean, the Japan, or whatnot. But we want the Malaysian to drive the company. If let's say we uh, feel that uh, this one is basically uh, you guys actually just, uh, you know, uh, the shareholders but it's actually not uh, run by you, then we will actually shy away. Alright? We will actually come up with our due diligence. Huh? And uh, business uh, operates in 10 supported creative pillars, of course. If let's say you guys uh, think that you guys actually not within the 10 creative pillars, let me know. And we will consider to actually uh, create uh, another pillar for you guys. And of course, track record for one year. Okay, this is actually for financing. For debt, yeah? For private equity, it's actually uh, quite relaxed. Uh, we can actually invest company which is not a Malaysian company. We actually looking at the uh, investing company uh, generally in South Asia. Malaysia, yes, South Asia as well. And uh, of course, uh, in the 10 created uh, pillars, like I said, profit track record must have three years profit. If not, we are going to shy away. And we are looking at the uh, business plan with uh, create, uh, clear valuation. Valuation is basically uh, if I can actually put it in perspective of uh, money, we put in let's say 10 million inside the company, after 5 years we will actually exit with 20 million. And how are you going to actually create that 10 million within 5 years is the valuation activities. Create value for the company and extend. Alright? Straight forward there. Yeah? Right. How do we process? Uh, it's simple. You go to our website. We have this uh, box called Pitch Now, and we just provide here all these things. The most important thing is actually your business proposal and your cash flow. All right, those are the two things that we look at. Of course, the others we look at so but those are the two things that we look at for our due diligence. Then we will call you for presentation. Uh, then uh, once the presentation done, uh, we will actually have q and A, Q &A uh, during the presentation, and after that, the due diligence will start. So. Due diligence actually we look at the uh, uh, range of uh, between three weeks to four weeks. So depending on the complexity of your business, maybe it can be up to two months. <coughs> and uh, after that, we will actually get for approval. We will actually have uh, several uh, approval level up to the board. And once uh, approved, then we can actually sign agreements. Once you guys actually have done everything the agreement say, then we can actually disperse. It's easy, right? Actually, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially during the due diligence and the agreement process. Because usually, um, due diligence, 
uh, we will go to uh, your premises, we will actually look at your uh, operations, we will actually ask uh, 1,001 questions. Uh, depending on the, the, the frequency of uh, the uh, ding dong uh, question and answer that you will receive during the due diligence process, if it is fast, then the due diligence can be concluded early. If not, then it will actually drag until two months or maybe three months. Agreement. Like I said just now, if let's say you want to buy a house or buy a car, you guys just go and sign the agreement and get your house and get your car. This one is actually a business agreement. So it is actually a little more complex and it's actually catered to individual business and industry. So the tendency is whoever that is signing this agreement will ask uh, his or her lawyer friend to actually help him or her to understand the agreement and they will have come they will come actually to us with one thousand and one question that will actually drag the agreement. So agreement uh, the quickest that we had uh, we concluded uh, around three months uh, and it can drag up to two years. <laughs> right? So so just just watch the space if let's say uh, you guys uh, what you call it uh, got got any uh, uh, a question uh, during the agreement, so you can just uh, come and, and, and discuss with us. Lah. Okay, all right, let's explain to you on that. All right, so we also actually have uh, some special initiatives. Uh, we call pitches, we have a fashion pitch, we have a uh, start this is actually a singing pitch. This one is basically a pitch for visual art. So, uh, what I'm trying to say here is uh, basically uh, during the past six years. Uh, during our initial stage, actually, of course, being an accountant, I'm actually uh, uh, wary about the cost. So, uh, people actually ask us, why don't you introduce my creative to the public? Why don't you actually go for roadshows? Guys, roadshow is actually very, very tiring, one thing, but also very, very expensive. Okay, you want to go to the whole Malaysia until Kelantan. Terengganu, Perlis, and up to Sabah and Sarawak is actually very, very expensive. So what we do, uh, we create awareness. So we, we ask the creative people to come to us. So basically by creating pitches, competition. Okay, you just imagine. Uh, fashion pitch, actually in the, this year is actually six years now. So we ask those who are genuine uh, business, uh, sorry, uh, fashion designers, to come to us to pitch their ideas and whatever products that they have together with their financial forecast so that we can, uh, what you call it, um, assess and we can actually uh, fund them for their expansion. Okay? Uh, I'll take uh, one more, actually, uh, VAP, Visual Art Pitch. Visual Art Pitch, actually, for visual art, of course, uh, for those who are actually in the industry of uh, doing sculpture and uh, 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 paintings. Uh, we create this kind of awareness for them. Uh, and at the same time, we actually get people to uh, find them. So uh, what I meant by that is actually, okay, we actually uh, ask for participation. So this uh, artist will actually come uh, to us with their drawings, with their sculptures and whatnot. We will actually have a, a day whereby uh, they can actually uh, exhibit their, their sculptures, exhibit their artwork. But at the same time, we ask the galleries from uh, the local industry to basically judge. Okay? So all these galleries will actually have judged them. And some of the galleries will actually be interested to take them as the artists under their roof. Okay? So before we actually allow the gallery to, to, to do that, then of course we actually ask the gallery to take part from us. Huh? So that's actually how we get the awareness from the public, from the industry players, plus we can get actually uh, investors for our set as well. So it was actually a, a, a win-win situation whereby we can actually uh, 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 what you call it, help the industry and also we can also actually help the business owner to, to do their business. Okay. All right, these are actually all uh, the other uh, pitches that actually we have. Uh, publishers is basically uh, the pitch for literature. So the publication house, we ask actually them for pitch. 
uh, okay, this is actually our sister company, uh, sorry, our uh, subscription company, Rio. Uh, I think you guys actually know what Rio is. Uh, anybody that has not gone to Rio, show of hands. Have you have not gone to Rio, okay. Rio is basically, uh, uh, it's a monthly, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's, it's a marketplace for creative. It's done monthly and it's actually done at one weekend. So basically every month we will actually have uh, uh, one weekend, Saturday and Sunday, we will actually pick a date, then we will actually do it. The last video was actually done uh, last weekend. Okay, it's actually done at the moment at Bangsa, Jalan Rio. Do come. Uh, the next one, when is it, Gina? 25th and 26th uh, August. 25th and 26th August. Just book in your diary. Come to Jalan Rio, Bangsa. Come, actually, and celebrate Rio. Uh, uh, Rio, basically, actually, we have uh, pop-up stores. We have, uh, you know, people actually uh, doing performances, baskets. We have uh, exhibitions. We have workshops as well. So, basically, all these actually the catalyst uh, for, for, for the... Uh, creative uh, people to basically showcase their products and showcase their creative uh, their creativity and their creative uh, uh, what you call it uh, uh, style so uh, if you can imagine uh, we actually doing at the APW website it's kind of like a, I would say a rundown it's a kind of a chic uh, place whereby uh, people actually just hang out uh, people from the, the Bangsa area from, from the Dallas area which hang out there uh, and and uh, do the Rio stuff, all right? So just to give a picture, what we have a Rio, uh, we have a store workshop, light apps, yeah? And uh, this is actually our vision. Basically, we want to actually provide uh, access uh, to people from the creative industry to showcase their things. And uh, of course, we actually want to uh, expose uh, the Malaysian uh, creative industry to basically to the next level. So that why uh, we actually ask for the international participants to actually come in as well. And uh, of course, uh, we will actually create the community so that we will talk about it uh, on, 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 on the Rio platform. And this is actually uh, what we actually have in Rio. We engage and we will actually uh, appreciate art. The workshop that we have uh, so far was uh, for, for uh, what do you call it, the creative art for uh, plays, for uh, musical. Okay, we have uh, some acting uh, workshop as well some uh, musical uh, workshop as well, playing guitar, playing uh, uh, and uh, uh, singing and what not. Okay. So, these are the, uh, some of the visuals, live acts. We have a uh, young Wayang Kulit and we have some activities. We have a uh, big giant jingle in the middle of Rio. We have uh, bubbles. You have children? Come. They will love bubbles. Um, Alright. Our uh, last but not least, uh, our the fourth uh, subsidiary is Chendana. Okay. Chendana is actually the latest uh, addition that we have uh, in our stable. Okay, what we do is basically, uh, <coughs> uh, this is actually the three components, uh, main components of Chendana. We energize the art. We actually increase uh, the demand of the art. Actually, we we uh, have the awareness of the public program. If you heard about uh, 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 KL in the city, we actually are going to basically uh, not pay but uh, showcase the artwork of the artists in the build, uh, buildings around KL. So we can actually look at uh, do we? Do you want actually uh, DBKL one is it? Uh, one of them? We're partnering with DBKL to basically cover the, uh, some of the buildings actually with artworks. So we can actually appreciate art around the city. And uh, we empowering the communities. What we do is actually we uh, improve the supply of the art. We actually uh, give assistance to those uh, uh, industry players, the, the, the fine art people, the uh, what you call it, the performing art people, to basically enhance their ability to showcase their work. All right. And last but not least, this is the most important thing: is reorganize. Reorganize means that actually we look at the creative industry as a whole and create a blueprint for it. If you uh, can imagine now actually we have uh, certain things like for example uh, art and craft, they yeah, are just focusing on art and craft and then we have Finas only on film, we have MDEC. So it's actually scattered all over the place. So what we do is actually we want to actually streamline everything. We want to actually have just one blueprint for the creative art of Malaysia. So that people actually don't, you know, uh, get away 
uh, if let's say you want to actually have uh, funding for this, you got to see this uh, funding for the other ones, you got to see a uh, 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 funder A. So, so it's kind of like a, a hub for, for the art, to get the blueprint. So what actually, Cedrana uh, is actually focusing, actually performing arts, visual arts and the uh, indie music, actually in small and medium acts, uh, uh, like for example, less than actually 500 people. And they're actually looking at the public spaces. All right, uh, just to highlight some of our investees. Yeah, before that, sorry. Uh, so we have uh, the financing side, the debt and also the equity. Then we have the marketplace for uh, creative and also we have Chenlana. So basically we are looking at the whole ecosystem from funding to doing to blueprint. So we actually have uh, uh, not everything, we have almost everything. So that's why actually market is created to basically elevate the art industry in Malaysia by looking at the whole ecosystem and we actually tap into that. Yeah? Alright, uh, I mean, uh, you know the Actor Studio? This is actually our, our client. Uh, KRU Music, not animation, just music. KRU is actually strong because of its music. We actually uh, expand because of their music. Their strength is actually music, so actually we look at their music. Uh, but they actually, the, the fashion designer do go. FR is not, uh, it is it's, uh, Fairu Sarda, fashion designer. Legend uh, is actually a publication house with Dogo. First is actually uh, our party with the twist, is a fashion designer as well. Uh, Cik Nyonya, uh, basically uh, our newest in the stable, is uh, um, uh, what you call that, uh, a chain uh, brand for uh, uh, food, uh, traditional food and art. So basically they carry the name Cik Nyonya because their food is basically based on Baba and Nyonya food. But it's halal. Right, uh, there's others, okay. Uh, oh, Duck, Duck and uh, Fashion Bele. Uh, basically has, uh, it used to be our investee, but uh, it has ceased to be our investee. Uh, not because they haven't actually paid us, but because they are taken over by Kalana. So if you guys uh, think, or if you guys believe that creative industry doesn't have future or cannot go anywhere, that's very wrong. Okay? Dark and Fashion Melee is actually, they have done uh, very well. So Kazana has a uh, look at them and Kazana uh, has agreed to basically expand them, to invest in them. So they are, they, they are taken over uh, by Kazana and actually expand actually, uh, their business. So we are actually very proud of Fashion Bele. Uh, others, uh, my performing arts agency, these are all uh, what you call it, uh, publication houses. Uh, well, okay, LOL. LOL is actually the one that uh, uh, going to bring uh, Kevin Hart in December. So you guys actually, uh, if you guys are uh, fan of Kevin Hart, uh, stand-up comedian, uh, please do check out lol.com.my, the website. I'm just promoting one of my industry now. Uh, and uh, they used to actually uh, bring in Russell Pickers uh, to this group. So, so this is actually a big boy, actually the comedy uh, 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 sphere. So last but not least, um, you can contact us here. We are actually just there at the PJ Trade Center, Pata Building there, six, uh, seventh floor, eleventh uh, floor, sorry. And uh, we can actually be reached by our Facebook, uh, email, and also website. We have also Instagram as well. Actually. Please do follow us. Um, right, that's about it. That's actually about it. Uh, presentation. Uh, any question from the floor? Yeah. Uh, 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 there's uh, also you can ask for uh, sort of like funds as well. Yeah. But uh, for my so what's the difference between marketing and Chinese? Uh, very good question. <coughs> my creative. Uh, when I say uh, marketing is uh, actually debt and uh, what you call it, uh, equity. Yeah? Uh, marketing and uh, debt and equity is basically uh, we do uh, funding, but we do in terms of uh, loan and also equity. Chendana, uh, they give a grant and sponsorship. So the difference is actually uh, the equity and, sorry, the, the, the grant and sponsorship is actually very, very small. So you can actually look at the region of 
20, 30, up to 15,000. But once you go for that, it's actually going up. We're actually looking at 1 million, 2, 3, up to 5 million. And then once you go to uh, private equity, it's actually more than that. Lah. 10 million, 15, 20 million. That, that. Before we actually disperse, we actually do some due diligence. Uh, the process is the same. Uh, may not be the same, but I for 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 that uh, and equity is actually full due diligence for the grant and sponsorship is actually uh, just uh, uh, lesser due diligence work on, basically. But still, uh, that's actually the, the, the difference. Okay? Is there anybody else? Yeah. This is me. Yeah. This is the hour. Okay. That guy. <laughs> oh, that guy. Okay. Sorry, my name is Peter. Um, you said that you for for debt uh, for equity financing, right? Uh, you look at three years uh, uh, track record profit. Is it? That's right. Um, when you say three years track record profit, is it is it of a certain kind of percentage compounded from every year, or I mean, are you looking at a two year percentage growth? You know that you're expecting, you know, for three years or. How, how, how do you how do you assess a three years track record profit? Because because two years ago, you know, across the board the industries were, were generally not doing well, yeah. So if, if we were to do it this year, that includes that year, is it? I give you that. that, that that's a very good question actually, and it's a very practical question. You're right, actually. Uh, when we look at the three years track record, no hard and fast rule on uh, you have to have a three years consequently no, actually. Uh, if let's say you have uh, a very good uh, uh, and, and very strong fundamental on your business, you have to say exist for 10 years. Uh, the past two years, actually, the economy has not been very good. But the past years, actually, you have uh, 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 like uh, three, four, maybe five years, actually, profit. That's good really for us. Because uh, when we uh, look at the investment, we look also at the current market condition. We don't actually like, uh, okay, loss. Reject, loss, reject. If you say we do that, eh, nobody actually will be, uh, what you call that, uh, on, on our on our investment. Lah, so yes, you're right. So uh, basically, um, when we look, we look at uh, the fundamental, uh, and it's not necessarily uh, uh, subsequently, I think you have to have a three years straight double profit. We look at the track record as well. Uh, okay, just, just a last question. Um, so, in a sense, when you look, I mean, uh, when you're assessing for, for track record as well, right? looking at the financial health of the company, um, let's say if, if the existing company has another term loan with another financial institution, is that taken into consideration where, oh, you know, these guys have got more loan, maybe we should stay. Because some banks, they do that, isn't it? <coughs> well, that's a very practical question. Again, very good, Peter. <laughs> you must have you've been uh, gone through with you, all these uh, exercises. Huh? Uh, okay, uh, to answer your question for private debt, yes, we actually look at that consideration. Like any other financial institution, when we want to uh, uh, provide financing, uh, we need to actually, one of the uh, five secret is actually uh, look at your uh, uh, cash and also uh, uh, collateral. So you have put in your collateral to other financial institution. So uh, when we actually come in, we are going to be ranked as second or third or fourth and whatnot. So uh, that one actually will uh, make us shy away. But if you come for private equity, we are okay with the existing fund, uh, what do you call it, the debt that you have. Because private equity, we are looking at equity. Because debt is basically, is, is, is simple. We give you, you pay us. But private equity, we inject in your company, we have to manage together to create value. Then that's okay, private equity okay.
good question. Uh, the first one, okay, what if you cannot pay? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, uh, let's not actually think about negative things. Uh, why don't when we uh, basically assess the due diligence, uh, when we ask for cash flow, you don't actually give uh, the financier the cash flow that after three or four years you cannot pay, right? So uh, do it positively. <laughs> if you do it at least uh, in such a way that you cannot pay, then of course uh, your loan will be rejected in the first place. So there's no question of you cannot pay anymore. Okay? You won't get a loan. Okay? So strive for pay, paying actually. Uh, but if that happens, uh, we look at a case-by-case -case basis and we will actually uh, 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 look at uh, how we can actually uh, structure or, or uh, re, re the load basically. Uh, look at case-by-case -case basis. Uh, for the second one, uh, you have enterprise. So we actually require certain uh, hard. It is okay. Because during our due diligence, you don't have to create a company first. Why we say this? Because what if actually you create a company and God forbid actually your loan is rejected. So you have a company, you don't have a loan. So don't create a company first. We will advise you to not create a company but give us the business uh, plan and also cash flow for say five years on how you will actually operate the company. The track record, don't worry, because you are enterprise, you still actually have uh, 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 what you call it, uh, sales, you have uh, profit loss, give it to us on the enterprise basis. We are okay with that. Any other questions from the floor? If there's uh, no other questions, we actually have uh, some uh, questions that our members have asked via Facebook and uh, Twitter. Just wanted to ask you, Reza, uh, what is your personal perception on how Malaysians in general uh, actually appreciate art? Uh, in general, okay, um, let's say a uh, performing art, you have uh, a play or a music for sexy tonight. What do you think actually uh, the perception of Malaysia is? How would actually they are, they are, they are, they are uh, if let's say this uh, is actually open for all and then that relation is coming for the play or for the uh, musical tonight what do you think actually that person actually will, will ask the, the organizer? Uh, you got free ticket lah? <laughs> or, or hey, hey boss, you got this car? <laughs> okay, we want to actually uh, uh, take away that perception because uh, what we uh, basically preach uh, to people, uh, basically, yes, you appreciate art, but you appreciate art economically. Because we have to actually educate them. Educate them in such a way that, you know, uh, this art, yes, you are looking at it uh, when you are relaxed, after office hour, you know, uh, uh, go dine with your partner, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, husband and wife. Then after that, you look at, uh, you watch the musical or the theatre. So these people, musical, theatre, these people that need money to basically make you relax. So we always preach to them, hey, appreciate art economically lah. You cannot actually upper get for free or whatnot. Remember the slide that actually I said uh, the art uh, people actually ask for grant. This is actually all the chain reaction. Because people don't want to actually pay towards art, hence why it is suppressed the art uh, goal or art mover, they have to actually resort to grant. So we want to actually push people to basically appreciate art economically so that this art people actually can be on top of it. Like what we actually have in the US, like we have in, in the West End in London. So that's actually what we want. Thank you, Mr. Another question. Uh, can you share about a time when you and your team have done something deemed uh, super successful on a large scale uh, that benefits a lot of communities and parties in Malaysia? Well, that's a very tough question. Well, what we are doing now, you've been financing to the art industry, to the art people, to the art world. This is a leap. 
in fact, is giving benefit to actually everybody. Okay, uh, we always actually like to think about um, our work is done when all the financial institutions start, or, or the VC, the PE start to put in money into us, then our work is done. But until then, until then, we will actually help the art industry. And uh, I mean, uh, it, it's actually apparent uh, when we actually support Fashion Ballet. Fashion Ballet, basically they have a lot of uh, fashion designers under them. So when we support Fashion Ballet, we support the other five uh, fashion designers. And when Fashion Ballet is actually uh, taken over by Kazana, and it's getting bigger, hopefully by then, we can uh, get actually supported. Uh, Kazana will support a lot more fashion designers, basically. But to answer your question specifically, into the industry, it will take a long time, but uh, that's actually the, the short answer. Curiosum. Actually, we just have one qu uh, more question that just popped up for one of our members. Um, a little bit of a firecracker, so I hope you get ready. In Malaysia, we have our love and horror stories in dramas and film. How can we, as a country, move away from that? What production house, houses or distributors take a chance of producing something that is controversial? Not talking about an art film, but something that is probably close to the heart. Uh, are you? <laughs> okay, uh, to start with, uh, Malaysia, uh, if we look uh, from the racial distribution perspective, 70% uh, or 60 plus percent is Malay, and uh, uh, another uh, 30 plus percent actually uh, made up uh, by Chinese, uh, uh, Indian and, and uh, others. So uh, we can actually see from the mass market TV, like TV3 and TV9, uh, they have actually all those, you know, uh, uh, the 7 o'clock, uh, what do you call it, drama and whatnot. And it, I think I, I don't want to actually um, uh, say anything about the quality and whatnot. But uh, all those uh, people, especially in Kampong, they like to actually look at that. Um, it is actually uh, subjective and it actually uh, can be seen upon a different angle. Uh, if we want to actually move forward, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we can actually uh, uh, increase uh, the quality or even the, the frequency of our drama. But uh, there are a lot of uh, film that actually uh, being uh, filmed now, like for example, uh, if you guys see Pulang, Pulang actually by uh, Prime World, it's actually quite good. I'm actually going to watch it actually uh, uh, tonight. Uh, I say quite good because I look watch the trailer, but uh, I'm going to watch it tonight. Uh, Ola Bola, uh, Police Evo, those are actually uh, uh, some, some good movies, uh, you know, by uh, 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 some of the other uh, good movies by uh, other popular person by Yusuf Aslam and whatnot. Those are actually uh, uh, good. So, Basically, uh, it, it depends on uh, the um, demand that we have. If let's say the people uh, predominantly uh, uh, in Malaysia actually want that kind of quality and itself, uh, then this uh, broadcaster actually will, 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 will transmit that kind of uh, movie and, and drama. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Reza. That's all the time that we have today. If uh Anybody else would like to have any questions? Um, you can ask Mr. Reza personally after this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reza, for coming to Common Ground for the air chat session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we hope to see you here soon. Uh, and everyone, we do have some refreshments available, uh, so please uh, help yourselves. And please introduce yourself to Mr. Reza for um, after chat sessions uh, questions. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everybody. Have a good weekend.